Hello and welcome to this session of Pulmonology Read Aloud. Today, we're going to read aloud a guideline statement issued by Government of India on Programmatic Management of Tuberculosis Preventive Treatment in India. Now, this is a government guideline on how to treat patients with so-called latent TB. So the term latent TB has now made obsolete and it is believed that even though a person suffering from TB infection but not harboring TB disease may be not manifesting symptoms, but the disease may not always be lethal. And we are at a stage in the end of TB program wherein we are now targeting even those people who are exposed to TB bacillus so that we can eradicate TB. So this guideline is very much based in India. However, I feel that for all developing countries and for every country who has endemic TB in the population, the role of preventive therapy cannot be underestimated. So let us clarify and see how we can approach our patients with TB infection who do not have active disease. This is a 125 page document which deals with various chapters on what are the target population to treat, how to diagnose latent TB or TB infection as we would now be calling it, and what medication to give and what side effects to expect. I'm going to summarize this quickly for you in a short while. So India per se has the highest burden of TB infection globally. It has been recognized that out of those who are infected, around five to 10% will develop active TB within the first two years of initial infection. If you are able to manage the infection so early in the course, they may not progress to active disease. And that's how the preventive therapy will come into play. In India, 71% of the household contacts of TB patients have a baseline TB infection. And the risk of this infection increases more so in HIV co-infections. So whom to target for preventive therapy? First of all, all household contacts of TB patients come as the target population. In each target population, we have to rule out active TB. If the patient is asymptomatic and there are no signs of active TB, then tests for TB infection can be done by two main tests, which we will be talking about later. And patient will be evaluated for preventive therapy and he may be started on if tests for TB infection are positive. If the patient does have signs of TB or presumptive TB, active has to be ruled out and followed, or if it's confirmed, the treatment needs to be started. So the eligible populations are those who are the highest risk of progression. Though everybody who is exposed to the infection may not develop active TB, and there are no sure shot tests to tell who will develop active TB and who it will just stay as an infection, but we have to rule out active TB amongst all household contacts, and this is the main thing. Mostly, patients who are living with HIV who are on ERT, they are the ones who are very, very likely to develop active TB disease. In these, anybody, whether an infant less than 12 months or an adult who has been exposed to active TB patients and has HIV, we have to give him preventive therapy to all after ruling out active disease. For household contacts which are not having HIV, immunocompetent patients, but they are less than five years of age, 
again preventive therapy should be given to all after ruling out active disease if a child is more than 5 years or is an adult who's been exposed to a tb patient in the family then we can choose to give preventive therapy only to those who are positive for tb infection but again ruling out of active disease is very essential this has been expanded to other groups those who are on immunosuppressive therapy patients having other forms of immunosuppression on cancer treatment on anti tnf treatment in stage renal failure with dialysis patients who are transplant patients or preparing for transplant again preventive therapy must be given after ruling out tb disease among those who are positive for tb infection if they are not positive for tb infection then the choice can be made whether to wait and observe but if they come out positive we have to start tb preventive therapy so what is this tb infection tb infection is a state of immune response which is stimulated by tb antigens but there is no evidence of a clinically manifest tb disease since there is no gold standard to detect the presence of infection there are two tests which are now mostly done most infected people have no signs and symptoms but they will still be at the risk and in these infections which were earlier known as latent tb infections we should be given preventive therapy so remember that target population has to be seen after ruling out of active tb and all these household contacts have to be evaluated for whether they are fit to receive preventive therapy and for people who are less than 12 months infants with hiv preventive therapy should include 6 months of isoniazid and not any other regimen in patients who are immunocompetent we will be offering to all under 5 years of age tb preventive therapy and in children who are above 5 years of age only after tb infection testing is possible then tpt is desired however if tb infection testing is not available tpt may not be deferred in groups who have high tb transmission probability like healthcare workers prisons mines tribal populations again according to their vulnerability specific intervention for preventive therapy can be done coming to the two tests that have been mentioning the commonly available are tuberculin skin test and interferon gamma release assay there had been several reports earlier when interferon gamma release assays were being used for treating tb active tb and not for preventive therapy and so it was discouraged and patients and doctors were notified not to depend on tests like serological tests and igrs for diagnosing tb however the role of these tests for detection of tb infection cannot be underestimated because they measure the delayed type 2 or type 4 hypersensitivity response to mycobacterial protein what is the difference between these two tests again both are easily available the results for tuberculin skin test we know are with us in 48 to 72 hours both have a good sensitivity but igras have better specificity and though the cost of tst is low whenever i interferon gamma release assays are available we we may use them because of their high sensitivity and specificity how to rule out active tb again it has been given in a beautiful flow chart if a patient is a household contact and is symptomatic then we investigate for active tb if he does not have active tb we check if he has any contraindication for preventive treatment if no contraindication we can give him tpt if this patient is not symptomatic but is less than 5 years of age again 
preventive treatments should be given if activity is going on. Only if he is above five years of age, we have to first rule out TB infection. If it's positive, preventive therapy. If TB infection testing is not available, we can do a chest X-ray and see if it's abnormal. We rule out active TB. Else, we give preventive therapy. And if this TB infection testing is negative, then the patient may be just followed up. In case of HIV positive patients, any symptoms suggestive of TB has to be investigated, else given preventive therapy, and no symptom means directly goes to preventive therapy. And the same for high risk groups. Do a TB infection testing, negative, leave them alone, positive, treat for preventive therapy. So amongst this preventive therapy, what are the regimens available to us freely? For people who are HIV positive and children more than 12 months or infants less than 12 months with contact of active TB or immunocompetent children less than 5 years with household contact of PTB. There are two regimens available to us, 6 months daily isoniazid and 3 months weekly isoniazid and rifapentin. But isoniazid and rifapentin has to be given only if the child is more than 2 years. If he is an infant, he has to be given only 6 months INH. If he is less than 5 years but more than 2 years, he can be given 3 HP. 3 HP is 3 months once a week. So total of 12. So 12 doses of INH plus profanity. If a patient is more than 5 years, then obviously we would try to test for TB infection and we can choose amongst any of these two regimens. In high risk groups also, we can choose amongst any of the two regimens. So this is a very nice chart, a table which gives us age-wise distribution of the dosage of INH and rifapentin required individually or in combination. When we are choosing 6 months of daily INH, the dosage is 5 to 10 milligrams per kg per day and in 3 months weekly, that is total 12 doses, again, according to the weight band less than 14 and more than 14 years, patients can be given a fixed number of pills. What is the comparison between these two options? If you're choosing six months of INH, the patient will take it daily. The pill burden will be more. But if a patient is pregnant, then it is safer for use. There is no restriction for ART, rather preferred for patients who are young and are on ART. For 3 HP, the duration is 3 months given once a week, so total 12 doses. If he's using fixed dose, then 3 pills of fixed dose. If he's using loose INH and rifapentin, then 9 pills. For patients who are pregnant, we cannot give this combination. For patients who are taking HIV medications, we cannot give this combination. Amongst the side effects, known side effects of isoniazid like hepatotoxicity, neuropathy are common. However, for patients with 3HP, flu-like syndrome, hypersensitivity reactions are more common and the side effects related to rifamycin groups. Coming to now prevention of adverse effects and there the role of paradoxin in treatment. So, for patients who have developed neuropathy, then the dose of paradoxin that has to be given in adults is 100 to 200 mg a day and INH has to be withdrawn. For prophylactic use, the dose of paradoxin to be given in preventive therapy is isoniazid 10 mg a day in children, 25 in adults. And for HIV patients, the dose has to be higher up to 50 mg a day. 
So what are the known adverse effects with preventive therapy drugs? We've already seen the effects are mostly related to INH, rifampicin, and rifampentin group. So elevation of liver enzymes or hepatitis, peripheral neuropathies is common. In rifamycin, rifampicin, rifampentin, gastrointestinal reactions like vomiting, hepatitis, cutaneous reactions, and thrombocytopenic purpura may happen along with discoloration of body weakness. There are certain rare side effects that can be looked into if we encounter. How about preventive therapy in drug-resistant TB patient contacts? So if a patient has drug-resistant TB, then amongst his contacts or household contacts, if he's INH resistant, then two regimens can be followed. One regimen is six months of daily levoflux. Six months of levofloxacin for contacts of rifampicin resistance with fluoroquinolone sensitive patients. Again, we have to follow the weight band. In case of these patients, again, four months of rifampicin can be given for those who are rifampicin sensitive but INH resistant. And the dose has to be again 10 to 15 milligrams per kg per day. There are special chapters given in these guidelines which tell us about special situations like uh, presence of infection amongst pregnant females, those with liver disease, renal disease, HIV, and infants born to positive mothers. These can be accessed freely online and can be referred to whenever is needed. So this is the end of my summarization of the guidelines. I hope it helps you in your practice. Happy reading and learning. I'll see you again with another topic. Thank you.